Hi, my name is Carla. I'm the full-time uh, math teacher at TOPS. I'm going to try to help you figure out an easy way to kind of set up your modules. All right, so when you think about making a module, sometimes it can be overwhelming. So it may be helpful to kind of make an outline. So I'm going to show you an outline that I've kind of set up um, to kind of help. So the first thing in my module usually is my description or overview. This can be something that you type out. This can be a short video, anything that you want. This is a good place to put your essential questions. Um, this is a good place to put a su suggested pacing guide. We give our students at TOPS their assignments for a whole week, and then we give them a pacing guide to try to make it easier for them so they don't put it all off to the end of the week and then panic if they don't have time to get it done. And um, I would like to list my standards here because we're always referring to our standards to make sure that we're covering the content that we're supposed to, and this is a good way to include that here. All right. It's also nice when parents are like, why are they having to do this? You can point back and say, well, because this is one of their standards, this is what we have to do. So several reasons that's a good reason to put that there. All right, um, next I usually have videos, notes, and vocabulary. That way um, they get to see right off the bat what they're going to be learning about. Sometimes we have guided notes, which means they just kind of fill in the blank and follow along with the video. And sometimes we ask them to do Cornell notes. At TOPS, all the full-time teachers use Cornell notes and maybe some of the others as well. Um, if you're not familiar with Cornell notes, um, there's a nice little web link here, and there's a great video on here that talks about how to do Cornell notes. One thing um, we all know as teachers, some kids are going to take fabulous notes, and some, and some kids are going to be horrible at taking notes. So the first few weeks, this is really good to just kind of train them and show them ways to take notes to be helpful because if they're at home doing this alone, they have the videos, but if they take good notes, instead of going back and re-watching the videos every time, they can use their notes to kind of help them throughout um, their week or their daily assignments. All right, we have daily or weekly assignments. This can be in the form of a quiz. This can be to upload or submit a document. I would train kids early to do both. That way they're familiar with this. And again, the first few weeks, you're just trying to train kids on um, expectations and how to do things. So if you kind of work with those and get all that stuff out of the way, then that'll be easier down the road. Because usually the first few weeks, your assignments may be a little shorter or easier as you're trying to get to know, know the students anyways. So it's a good way to kind of incorporate that at the same time. All right, digital assignments and discussions. I include digital assignments and discussions as a way to review or spiral in material that we've previously learned. So this can be Khan Academy, Desmos, Delta Math, whatever you use. And um, again, most of these are review material, and that way they're seeing material again so that they don't forget it, okay? All right, um, explain material. Explain material are assignments that they have to explain how they get the answers to, not just show their work. They, they need to be able to solve it, show their work, and then explain how they got from one step to the next and why they did it. Because I know with math, there's more than one way to get to a solution a lot of times, and there's a lot of correct ways. Just show me. Can you explain how you did it? Um, and that's a great way to understand how kids think, get to know your kids well, um, and kind of see what they're doing. Again, Scott Lamey started this. I think it's amazing, and I continue to use it. It's very time-consuming to grade, but hands down, it's the best way to see what the kids know. Um, testing quizzes. 
Testing quizzes um, are not used every week, but again, um, you may use a test generator. We used to use power tests. I think we're going to have something new this year. You can put questions in Canvas, upload documents, however you want to do it. So this is kind of what I'm going to use as an outline, and I'll kind of show you um, the first couple of weeks you're kind of getting to know your kids. So if you're seeing my screen, you know, um, a few questions about the course that makes them answer stuff about the syllabus that teaches them to read the syllabus. Tell me about yourself. This year, I think I'm going to include a flip grid and have kids upload a video um, that we share the next week and do a discussion on kind of getting to know each other, that sort of thing. But if I flip down here or scroll down here to module three, this is one that includes kind of several different things. And I'll kind of show you how most of my modules are laid out. So my module overview, again, is going to have essential questions. It's going to be um, a pacing guide and it's going to have the standards that we are covering. OK, now it also says there will be a quiz. OK, so they know there's an upcoming quiz. So this kind of is both for the kids and the teachers just kind of prepare for that. All right. So again, I would start by putting my essential questions and my standards on here first. And then after I build my module, come back and add the pacing guide. So the pacing guide is the last thing I use, but it's the first thing you want the kids to look at. And then after the module overview, then we may have notes and videos. And if they go through Cornell Notes, the first couple weeks I always put a video on there on how to take Cornell Notes. And then they grow down and they have to submit their notes. Their notes here are worth 40 points. Most things I have a rubric with just because it makes it very easy to grade it. So then we have another assignment. You can see that they get two attempts. It's going to keep their highest score. This is just a new, um, not new, they should know how to do average rate of change in Math 3, but it's new this semester to these kids. So it's um, considered a new assignment and they get two attempts. There's no time limit and this just counts as a daily grade or a weekly practice. Another one on inverse functions. This one they have to um, same kind of thing. So they get two attempts. This time they get to see their answers after the last attempt. All right, a digital and discussion. So this one they have to go to Delta Math and complete um, these task and then um, submit that showing that they've done that. And then an explain material assignment here. They're going to have two questions and again they're going to explain it. So they're going to solve it, show their work, and then explain why they did it using that method or whatever. And I think that is all for module three. Um, and again, I don't know if you noticed, there was five assignments on this module. So each assignment had one day attendance. We do our attendance based on if we have a work week that has all five days, then, you know, some assignments may be worth more. If we have a test, it may be worth two days. They may have four assignments instead of five. So it just kind of depends on um, how many days, school days are in that week and how we want to do that with attendance. And you can see each week is a little different, but it always starts with a module overview and it kind of goes through um, the same kind of process. And All right, so I was wondering why this was a short module, but when I made this, we had Labor Day and Teacher In-Service Day, so this was a three-day week here that you're looking at. Okay, so 
I hope this is helpful. I hope everyone has a great year.